Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and today I will be showing you how to renovate your cabinets and countertops using contact paper. I have used contact paper a few times and it is one of my favorite DIY projects to do because it is so simple to use and the finished product turns out beautiful. I found that using contact paper is not too hard and would like to share my tips and tricks with you. But before we begin, let me give you some background information on contact paper. So you may be wondering, what is contact paper? Well, it is sort of like wallpaper. It is an affordable material that has a design on one side and an extremely adhesive surface on the other side that sticks to any smooth, hard surface. Contact paper is great to use because it is a cheap and inexpensive way to change up your countertops and cabinets compared to replacing them completely, which can cost between $10,000 to $30,000 depending on what materials you use. It is also great for people who live in apartments or are renting a house that cannot make permanent changes to the home, as the contact paper can be easily removed. The supplies needed to complete this project include contact paper for the countertops and cabinets, a cleaning spray and a towel, a power drill or a screwdriver, scissors and or a box cutter, and a straight edge that will be used to flatten out air bubbles as we lay down the contact paper. For this project, I will be using black wood contact paper for my cabinets and white marble contact paper for my countertops. The white marble contact paper only cost $7 and the black wood contact paper cost about $15. I found both of these on Amazon and will link them in the description box below. Now finally, how to actually complete this project. This project can be done in three main steps. Prepare countertops and cabinets, cut contact paper to fit surfaces, and stick down contact paper. So going straight into step 1, you will need to prepare the cabinets and countertops. You will do this by removing all cabinet doors using your power tool or screwdriver. It is advised that you have someone help you with this if you're using a power drill. You will also need to remove any drawers. Removing the cabinets and drawers will make sticking down the contact paper a lot easier. You will also need to spray the countertops and cabinets with cleaning spray and wipe them down good so the adhesive on the contact paper sticks well. For step 2, you will be cutting the contact paper to fit your countertops and cabinets. First, cut the contact paper to fit the surfaces of your countertop using the measurement grid on the back. My first tip is to cut the contact paper in different sections as you see me doing now. My second tip is to cut the contact paper a little bigger than the surface you are measuring, just in case you mess up when sticking down the paper. Also, we will be cutting out the hole for the sink as we lay down the contact paper. So for now, put the contact paper over the sink and cut a length that is a little longer than the sink. Next, we will be cutting out the contact paper to fit the cabinets. Cut a piece of contact paper that is large enough to cover the frame of the cabinets and use the extra contact paper to cut out pieces for the cabinet doors and drawers. Again, we will be cutting out the cabinet door holes as we lay down the contact paper. After cutting our pieces, we will finally be doing the last step, which is to lay down the contact paper. Start by laying down the contact paper on the edges of your countertop and use your straight edge to flatten out any air bubbles as you peel back the paper, protecting the adhesive. Clean up the edges as needed using your box cutter. Next, start to lay down your contact paper for the side of the counter that does not have the sink. Peel back the paper protecting the adhesive and use your straight edge to flatten out air bubbles as you go. Once the excess contact paper is close to the sink, use your stray edge to mold the contact paper to the edge of the sink and use the box cutter to cut off the excess contact paper. For the side of the counter that has the sink, use the same method of using your stray edge to mold the paper to the edge of the sink and use the box cutter to cut off the excess.
If you're having trouble getting the paper to mold around the sink, my tip is to cut slits around the sink like so. This will help the contact paper not be as constricted anymore and therefore will help it mold better. Lastly, for the countertops, make sure to clean up around the sink and make sure there is no more air bubbles. After you are done with the countertop, you will then stick down the contact paper on the frame of the cabinets. To cut out the cabinet or drawer holes, feel along the edges of the holes and use your box cutter to cut out each side. Repeat for each cabinet and drawer hole. Also, don't forget to clean up the edges of the cabinet frame. After the cabinet frame is done, move on to sticking the contact paper on the drawers and cabinet doors. To make the edges of the drawers sharp, cut the contact paper in the corners as shown and fold each flap under. For the cabinet doors, make sure the contact paper is molded sharply in the inner edges and then move on to the outer edges. Use the corner cutting method to get sharp corners. Repeat this for any remaining cabinet door. And finally, make sure to put the doors back on using a power tool or screwdriver. And there you have it. This is the beautiful finished product. As you can see before, the coloring of my countertops and cabinets were very outdated and with the use of contact paper, they now look modern and sleek for a relatively low price.